Hey guys, it's Miss Summers with your notes today. Today we're doing, we're talking about the scientific method. And you should have a set of notes that looks something like this. So, as you can probably tell from this, this set of notes, the scientific method is a process. It's a set of steps that you're going to take in order to solve a problem. So, let's first define what it is. The scientific method, again, are steps we're going to use in order to solve some type of problem. All right, when we use the scientific when we use the scientific method, we are going to end up with what we call a valid experiment. And valid is just a fancy word that means true or it reflects reality. So it's going to show us what the real world is actually like. So let's start with our first step. It's always good to start here. The scientific method always starts with this. It starts with a question. This question can also be a problem. All right. So this question or problem is going to be based on something that you see based on observation. So you see something. So maybe you see some of your friends and they're studying and then some of your other friends are studying the same thing but they're listening to their music. And you ask, I wonder if that music helps them study better. All right. So once we have our question, we're going to do this next step. And this next step is research. And that's why we have a little computer. You're going to go see what other people say. We want to use reliable sources. A reliable source is going to be one that is accurate. All right, one that you know the people who wrote it have some idea what they're talking about. So we're not going to use something like Wikipedia. Now, Wikipedia is a really cool website, and it can be kind of useful in a starting point, you know, starting to look for research. But you don't want to use Wikipedia because anybody can change a Wikipedia article, and they don't necessarily have to know what it's about. So we want to make sure that our sources are not like that. That the only people that can write about them are people that actually know what they're talking about. So we had a question. We did some research. So again, let's go back to our friend thing. Maybe um, you did some research on music and test grades and studying and concentration. And you found that some researchers think that music helps with studying. All right. Once we have our research, we're going to go to our next step, which is to make hypothesis. All right. So a hypothesis, what that is, is a potential answer to the question that you asked. So it might be the right answer, but it might not be. It's, it's your best guess. So sometimes a hypothesis is called an educated guess. It's educated because you did some research beforehand. All right. So if our research says that music helps when you study, maybe I can make my hypothesis If I listen to music when I study, then I, well, and this isn't going to fit in the little bubble, which is fine. 
I will do better on test. I know that's outside the bubble. But my hypothesis has an if then format. If I change something, then something else will happen. So if then is what most hypotheses are going to be like. If I change something, then something else will happen. So I've had my question, I've done my research, I've made my hypothesis, now comes the fun part. Number four, it's time to experiment. So when you experiment, you put your hypothesis to the test. And an experiment is gonna have a couple, whoops, an experiment is gonna have a couple different um, things in it. And that's what we wanna know. When we, these are the four that are most important to y'all this camera would stop falling, that would be great. Okay, so the independent variable, independent, independent, I, the independent variable, I can change the independent variable. It's what the experimenter changes, all right? So with our music example, I can change what kind or if, my friends listen to music when they study or not. I can take two of my friends and say, you go study with music, you go study without music. I can change it. So I'm going to also write down here, changed by experimenter. I can change it. The dependent variable when you're dependent, you rely or need someone else. The dependent variable changes or is changed by, let me, let me fix that, changed by the independent variable. I'm going to abbreviate that IV. You measure the dependent variable. So, if I tell my friends, you go listen to music while you study, you go study in silence, what I measure after, what I think the music is going to change, is how well they do on a test. So my independent variable, I changed it. The dependent variable depends on this. I'm going to measure it later. All right. So those are my variables. Everything else in the experiment should stay the same. Those are the only two things that I really need to worry about. Everything else should be the exact same. So in my experiment, I should have two groups. I should have a control group and I should have an experimental group. A control group does not get changed. It stays the same. So no independent variable. All right. The reason we do that is because we want them as a comparison group. All right. If I have my friend study to music and they get an A+, plus, maybe they would have gotten an A plus by themselves without listening to music. I won't know unless I have a comparison. So my experimental group is the opposite of my control group. The experimental group is the one that's going to get the independent variable changed. So they're going to be my music group. So you always have to have at least these two groups. Control does not change experimental group does. So, I had my question, I did my research, I made a hypothesis, I said music will make you do better on test, then I did my experiment, I took two friends, and I gave one a test, or I gave one music, and I sat the other one in silence, and they both studied, and then they both took the same test. My music was the independent variable, I measured how well they did on the test. That was my dependent. Now, so they've taken the test. I'm going to go to my next step. 
number five, which is analyze data. All right, so analyze data. This picture, hopefully you recognize it as a graph. We're gonna do a bunch of stuff on graphs tomorrow, but um, when I analyze, I can have two types of data. I can have qualitative or quantitative. All right, so qualitative, if I look at this word right here, qualitate or quali, it sounds like quality. These are gonna be descriptions. So example, maybe color. That's a description. You can't, I can say, all right, this one turned red or this one turned blue or something like that. It's not a number. Quantitative, this word right here, sounds like quantity. All right. These are numbers. which is a lot easier to see. So in my experiment with my test, my test score was my dependent variable. That's a quantitative piece of data. Those are numbers, all right? If you want an, another way to remember between quality and quantity, if you're in Spanish one right now, or you've taken Spanish or you know Spanish, you know that quantos, and I might be missing an accent mark somewhere. I feel like I am. I think it's here. I don't know. Hopefully it is. Quantos means how many. So if you went to like Spain or Mexico or somewhere and you wanted to ask somebody how old they were, you would say quantos años tienes, which literally means how many years do you have? Cuales, and again, I hope I'm spelling this right. And if I'm not, please forgive me. Cuales in Spanish means which. Like which one? All right. If you, if somebody asked you if you were at the park and they said, which dog is your dog? You wouldn't say number seven. That don't make any sense. You would say the brown dog or the, the black dog or the white dog or whatever. All right, so qualis, quality, description, quantity, quantitative numbers. All right, so we've done our question, we did our research, we made our guess, we had our hypothesis, we did an experiment. I put the numbers in a graph so I can see it a little easier. And my last step, which is why it's here with a little checkered flag and a finish line, I'm going to make my conclusion. So my conclusion is gonna be one of two things. All right, the first thing, maybe my conclusion supports my hypothesis. That means that the data matches what I thought was gonna happen, all right? If that's the case, I'm gonna follow this arrow, and I'm gonna repeat the experiment and see if I get the same thing twice. Now, Sometimes in science, you do all this good research and you make this really good hypothesis and you do this really good experiment and you analyze your data and what you end up with is data that does not match your hypothesis. It's not, we're not gonna use wrong or right. We're gonna say the hypothesis is rejected all right, it means your answer didn't match what we found out, and that's okay. That's not necessarily a bad thing. You didn't do bad science if you reject your hypothesis. All you gotta do, so let's follow this arrow, if your hypothesis is rejected, you go back and you revise your hypothesis. You change it, you change the hypothesis, to a different answer, and then you keep following the steps. And maybe by the time you get back here, your hypothesis will be supported, all right? So what's really neat about the scientific method, I'm gonna zoom out here a little bit. 
we start it here, but we never really finish it. It's always going back, either back to the experiment or back to the hypothesis. Sci we always want to make sure that in our experiments, we're doing the best possible experiments that we can do, and we want to keep repeating them to see if we get the same thing. The more often something is repeated, if you keep getting the same thing over and over again, the more likely that it's true, and that's what we ultimately want. All right, so you're going to keep this set in your notes. You can color the arrows. You can add color to help you um, when you're reading this. That's totally fine. Um, and then we will get started on our next activity.